we're good. Oops. And we're good. Very good. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Economic Development and Jobs Committee. Uh, Chairman Price is not available this afternoon, uh, so I'll be uh, chairing the meeting today. Um, Mr. Lid, if you could, please call us to order, call the roll, and then uh, we'll uh, provide our introductory comments about public comment, please. Very good. Councilmember Kikorian? Here. Councilmember Blumenfield? Blumenfield present. Councilmember Raman? Here. And Councilmember Harris Dawson. Very good. And members of the public who would like to offer a public comment on the items listed on the agenda should call 1 669 254 5252 and use meeting ID number 160 177 1578 and then press the pound key. Press the pound key again when prompted for participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star 9 to request to speak. Thank you very much. Um, members, Chairman Price has asked that we continue items 1 and 5. Um, and following public comment, item 4 uh, will be um, suitable for consent approval unless members have questions or concerns. Um, but we can begin at this time by taking a public comment. So let's go ahead and call the first speaker. Caller, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Caller, are you there? Hello. Hi, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, this is Rafael Espinal, uh, president of Freelancers Union, and I'm calling about the Freelancers and Free Act. Okay, so you have a minute. You may start. Well, thank you to Chair Price and especially Councilmember Bob Bloomfield, who uh, has sponsored uh, this motion legislation. Uh, my name is Rafael Espinal. I'm the president of Freelancers Union and a former New York City Council member of the city of New York. Uh, the Freelancers Union represents over 500,000 members nationwide, 550,000 who, who live in California. I'm calling in support of the legislation to expand uh, non payment protections uh, to independent workers. Um, we have done uh, numerous studies uh, across the free, uh, independent contractor economy and found that over 70% of freelancers struggle with non payment and lose about $6,000 per year. Uh, for our members, that, that represents about 13% of their annual income. And with such great income and stability, it becomes increasingly difficult to cover basic expenses such as rent, health insurance, and quality tax payments. So for many reasons uh, that I've just stated, it's, it's, we believe it's important that a city like Los Angeles, which we all know is a hub for independent workers, expands uh, protections to ensure that independent workers, when they do work, they actually get paid for their work. That concludes your time. Thank you. Caller, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, Barry. This is Rex. Well, I wanted to comment on the Freelancers and Free Act as well. Okay, you have a minute. We start. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I wanted to say I know one thing that Annie Lino's hate more than anything is being seen as less than New York. Um, but we have the opportunity for freelancers to be on equal footing with our East Coast counterparts. The Freelance Agent Free Act has added stability to many free er, freelancers' lives. Um, Elliot prides ourselves on being a city for creatives and entrepreneurs, so why not actually back that up with legislation and guarantee payment for our workers? Thank you so much. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Caller, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Caller, are you there? Good afternoon. Apologize for that. Rob Notop, Policy Director with the Los Angeles County Federation of Labor. I'd like to speak on item number two. Okay, you have a minute. You may go. Wonderful. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Chair Krikorian and members of the, of the committee. 
Again, Rob Nota, Policy Director of the Los Angeles County Federation of Labor, and we're calling in strong support of item number two. We would like to uh, forward the item to the city attorney to come back with a draft ordinance. Um, for the reasons stated by the previous two callers, um, for the, from the LA Fed's perspective, it's pretty simple. We believe in an honest day's work or an honest day's pay. We had, I would ideally like everybody to be an employee, but at times that, 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 that is impossible. So in instances where there are freelance workers who are out there, we want to make sure that they are, in fact, paid for the work, and it's that simple. So we appreciate your support. Thank you, and have a great, uh, great afternoon. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Caller, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hi. Stephen Lewis, speaking on freelances and free, item number two as well. You have a minute, you may start. Hello, everybody. My name is Stephen Lewis. I am also speaking, like the previous callers, on the necessity and moral imperative to pass the Freelancers and Free Act. I come from the Freelance Solidarity Project, which is part of the National Writers Union, which has represented proudly unions in all different types of means all across the world since 1981. Um, to echo the other callers, this has been passed in New York at a time where Angelinos are forced out on the streets due to rising rents, stagnant wages. It is, again, an imperative to pass the legislation like this. And it would be incredible to see Los Angeles, a place where uh, multimedia creators, Hollywood producers, cinematographers, and all other types of editors and freelance writers and copywriters could seek the same protection. Um, thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Paula, right, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. And general public comment from the Armenian. Yeah, three minutes. Let me start. Well, he, he has two minutes on the agenda items and one minute for general public comments. So let's take them in that order, please. Okay, you can have two minutes and may start. Oh, you, oh, young lady, you should not allow him to mansplain you. Like okay, that. you're already off the agenda. That's your only yeah. warning. Okay, number one, you fucking Armenian. General Contract Administration. What? A fair work week? We already have a fair work week, don't we? <laughs> I get a lunch break. Everybody at City Hall gets a lunch break. That's fair. We don't need number one, no. Number two. Yes, I support number two. The Los Angeles Freelance Prostitute Worker Protection Law. Yes. Now, finally, women of the evening. And in Derek City's case, men of the evening. Okay. Let's uh, uh, you go ahead and go to your general public comment. He has one minute for general public comment. One moment, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Speaker, are you there? Mr. Chair, please yeah. speak. Okay. Speaker, uh, state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name is Sita, and I'm a freelance care I'm calling on um, item number two. Um, <clears throat> that last speaker is going to be a tough act to follow, but I'm calling because I've not really experienced extreme hardships, um, extreme hardships from non-payment and late payment. Um, I've had my car repossessed this year. I've been late on rent for several months. I've been kicked off of my health plan, and as a trans woman, that is extremely important to my mental and physical well-being. Um, all because I haven't been able to pay my bills. Um, I'm very late on my electric bill. I'm, I'm late in every every form of bill I could possibly be late on. I'm late on from non-payment or late payment. So I'm just calling as a citizen as well just to a, um, just to call in support of uh, freelancers at Free for Angelinos. Thank you. Next Thank speaker, you. please. Caller, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on.
caller ending in 4704. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hi. Can, can you guys hear me? Because yes, go right ahead. Okay, hi, my name is uh, Omer Kazi. I'm the Director of Policy and Advocacy uh, for the Officers Guild, and I'm, um, I'm, I'm calling to express our support for Item 2 on the agenda, the Freelance and Free Act. Yes. Um, the Authors Guild, okay, the, the Authors Guild is the oldest and largest uh, professional organization of authors in the United States. Our 12,000 members um, include uh, writers, journalists, poets, uh, award-winning novelists, and um, they, they have uh, all have one thing in common. They work uh, without minimum wage and employing benefits um, and, and any other kind of work of protections um, on a freelance basis, uh, which is why the, 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 the protections are of the Freelance and Free Act are uh, an initial first step into recognizing the labor of our members as labor and um, measuring um, the, the, their measuring their labor as being equivalent to um, um, employees um, uh, the, 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 with the same level of protection. Um, the 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 other the problem the main problem that the freelance our freelance members often also face is that uh, they suffer from chronic um, uh, uh, non-payment issues and the freelance business and free act, which is uh, has been very successful in. New Caller, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Caller ending in 7021. Are you there? Uh, yes, Larry Goldberg, President of the National Writers Union. I'd okay. like to speak to item number two. You have a and, minute. Uh, thank you. Excuse me? You only want to speak on item two? Yes. Okay, you have a minute. Uh, okay, we'd like to thank the committee for moving this forward, and uh, we'd like the committee to know that this legislation has the full support of the International Brotherhood of Teamsters and the L.A. County Federation of Labor. Uh, it's great that you're moving this forward, uh, but the best argument for it is that it works. The New York City law has collected more than $2 million for thousands of freelancers. Uh, we're hoping that you can further lower the threshold and expand the coverage uh, to freelancers everywhere who work for L.A.-based entities. Um, by, not doing, by only restricting it to L.A. Uh, freelancers, it could actually prove to be a disincentive to hire them. If uh, freelancers outside the area are unprotected. So, again, we support uh, what you're doing. Uh, we look forward to working with you uh, after the summer recess to make this a reality in L.A. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Uh, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Caller ending in 0879, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, go right ahead. Great. Um, my name is Jen Swan. I'm calling in support of item number two, the Freelance Isn't Free Act. Okay, okay. you have a minute. You may start. Thank you. Um, I'm also a longtime freelancer in the city of Los Angeles and a member of the Southern California chapter of the National Writers Union. Um, I'm really passionate about the work I do freelancing as a writer and an editor, but I spend far too much of my time, you know, simply trying to get paid for that work. Um, and the Freelance Isn't Free Act would change that. You know, it would guarantee that basic worker protections for freelancers like myself all across the city where freelancing has become the norm for better or worse and a lot of creating it creative industries um, wouldn't have to spend so much of their time simply trying to get paid. Um, it would mean the difference between getting a paycheck, to, uh, pay rent, put food on the table, and being able to get back to doing uh, the work that we actually perform. Um, I urge you to pass the Freelance is a Free Act, which already passed in New York City in 2017 in New York State earlier this month, um, and doing so in Los Angeles would mean we have the same protections as our counterparts in New York. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. 
Caller, please state your name and the items you like to speak on. Hi, are you able to hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Go right ahead. Perfect. My name is Lindsay Williams, and I'm a freelance makeup artist and hairdresser. I've been in the industry for over 15 years, and I actually lived in New York for 10 years and benefited from the Freelance Isn't Free Act out there. there when on item two? Oh, I'm so sorry. Number two, item two for Freelance okay. Isn't Free Act. You have how many? I'm so sorry. Thank you. Um, anyway, I'm a hair and makeup artist. I've been in the industry for over 15 years, uh, providing services to clients that then use those images or films to, you know, further their companies and brands. And when I lived in New York for 10 years, when the Freelance to the Free Act was um, instated, it was incredible. And many of my fellow artist friends were so happy to finally be able to have a, a backing legally to fight um, late payments or no payments. Because unfortunately for us, we there is so much non-payment that happens with freelancers. And like the previous person just stated, it takes a long time to get paid. And we spend a lot of our time not getting paid, trying to get paid. So I benefited from that and have now been in L.A. for a year and a half. And I think it would just be such a huge support of the community to validate freelancers and the work that we do um, engage in in the community and in these uh, all these amazing skill sets that we bring to the table, but there's such a lack of support when it comes to the finances, and it makes it very hard to live and to pay bills, so I really support this, and I hope that it could even be statewide, because I don't think it should be conditioned to just Thank one you. city, but I understand. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Caller, please state your name and the items you like to speak on. My name is Denise Arena Scamilla. I would like to speak on article number two. Okay, you have a minute. item number? Yes, you have, yes, you have a minute. Thank you so much. Um, yes, I've been in this industry for actually about eight to nine years, and in my entirety of being a licensed hairstylist and freelance makeup artist and groomer, I have repeatedly run into issues with non payment, late payment, despite the threat of um, legal repercussions with uh, said clients that do this to me, um, regardless of any, like, sort of compounded interest and stuff. Um, I recently worked with Dior, and we are now entering on day nine of their net, net 30 overpayment. Dior spent roughly between 300000 and half a million dollars on their recent Venice Men's Cruise show, which I had worked on for the VIP guests. Um, this is a multi-billion dollar company. Uh, much like other companies who are in the millions um, and who have financial backing through investors and whatnot that have money up front but still insist um, on, for whatever reason, paying late. Um, I've had this uh, issue with Adidas. I've had this issue with Nike. I've had this issue um, with you smaller brands. Thank you. Uh, I apologize to everyone for the short time uh, window, but we have to be fair to everybody. Um, all right, next speaker, please. Caller, right, please state your name and the items you like to speak on. Go ahead, caller. Hello, hello. This sound effect is disruptive of the meeting, so go ahead and cut off Sir? the call, please. Sir, can I speak on all items? Next speaker, please. Hi, please say your name and the name of the I'd like to speak on all items and not agenda public comment, please. Go ahead. Uh, I want to speak on item one and five, and item two, and non-agenda public comment, please. Go ahead. Your time is running. Uh, well, how much time do I get, sir? You have what's left of your two minutes for agenda items, and then you have one minute for general public comment. Oh, uh, 
Okay. In regards to a resolution that the city of Los Angeles has not achieved, uh, I believe people of the mafia unions and chapters should bring negotiations by a civil action in federal court because it's relevant that there has been a reasonable cause to believe that a pattern or practice of discrimination exists where the case where people are not being paid to pay their rent, food, and get escort service. Sorry, Jose Weasar. And this raises an issue of general public importance under 42 U.S.C. 1983, sir. Okay, this is not uh, the agenda, so city agenda, that's your only warning. That's right. I'm talking about item two, labor uh, negotiations of trash, sir. So okay, sorry, you're not on the agenda. Do you have my general public, public comment, comment for one minute? Do you have one minute for general public comment? Oh, okay. Um, again, I reckon motherfucking niggas don't want to let me participate because you're fucking stupid. You should allow the public to have every opportunity to point out issues of importance, sir, because it raises an issue of general public importance. 42 C Session 121-88, bro. Public accommodation for people who are not getting paid, need food, and need services rendered by motherfuckers like you under ADA Title Two, Section Thirty Five Point One Thirty, Number Seven. Avoid discrimination. Fuck you, LA. Fuck you, DA. Fuck you, niggas. All entities. Fuck ya. Yeah. Yeah, this is how we're gonna go. Branded dead bitches a higher U.S. three ninety five four 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 nineteen sixty nine. That concludes your time. All right, next caller, please. Caller, please state your uh, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Okay, you've already spoken. Cut him off. Next speaker, please. Caller, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hello? Yes. Good afternoon. Hi. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Sarah Roby, and I would like to speak on, um, on um, issue two, please. Very good. You'll have one minute. Go right ahead. Thank you. I've been a makeup artist in Los Angeles for 13 years, and I have to say that throughout that time, I've periodically had problems getting paid in a timely fashion, but it's gotten much worse over the last one to two years. Um, currently, I have over $3,000 sitting at over 150 days. Clients are depending on the freelancer's distaste for taking people to small claims court and using that as a way to stretch out their time to pay us. So it, it, the, the, the strategy just seems to be how badly do you want to get paid because there are no penalties for them. Um, right now I have less protections than my counterparts in New York that currently have the protection of freelancers and free. And I feel like in Los Angeles, given the taxes that we pay and the privilege of living in California, it's only right that we, as freelancers, should have those same protections and the same penalties for good beat brands. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Holly, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Go ahead, caller. I didn't get my general public comment. You have one minute. Yeah. Thank you, kind sir. As 
you know. Wait a minute, animal. I have trouble getting paid. I eat your vegetation and I shut it out. Preventing forest fires and cleaning up brush on your lot. And what do I get? I get the stinky old man, goat herder, cutting me off and mansplaining the nice lady trying to do a nice job. What kind of city is this? And that current price, I'm going to complain to him. I'm going to have you thrown off this committee. Yes. Animals have rights to speak. 42 U.S.C. 1983. Fuck you politely. That concludes your time. Next speaker, please. Caller, please say your name and the items you'd like to speak on. He spoke and you can cut him off. If I will say, cut him off. And may I cut him off. rejoin? Next speaker, please. Caller, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. has spoken three times. Cut him off. Next speaker, please. Mr. Chair, there are no more speakers asking. All right. That'll close public comment for all agenda items, and it'll close general public comment. Uh, members, as I mentioned at the outset, items one and five will be continued at the request of the chair. Um, and uh, does anyone have any objection to taking up item number four on consent now? If there's no objection and nobody would like to hear anything further on that, let's go ahead and call the roll on item number four. Councilmember Kikorian? Aye. Councilmember Blumenfield? Blumenfield, aye. And Councilmember Rahman? Yes. Very good. Thank you. That'll bring us to item number two. Very good. Item two, Bureau of Contract Administration report relative to a Los Angeles freelance worker protection law. All right. Um, Mr. Blumenfield, would you like to introduce this matter? Sure. Um, you know, I know as, as uh, Angelino, sometimes we like to think that, you know, no good ideas come out of New York or nothing good comes out of New York. But um, as someone who's born in New York, I don't ascribe to that theory. I think there can be good things from New York. Uh, and in fact, I was pleased to bring this, this issue forward uh, after seeing the great work that they did in New York. So I also want to say, in recent years, as Cal California has taken significant steps to ensure that workers are properly classified as employees. Uh, legislature adopted AB5. There was litigation over Prop 22 in which these app-based companies spent more than $200 million to exempt their workers from AB5. This item takes a step toward providing basic protection for the genuine freelance workers who are not covered by AB5. And it's important to make that, that distinction. I want to be clear that nothing in this ordinance weakens AB5 um, or is an out for people who are trying to misclassify workers who are treated as employees. That's not what's at play here. There are people who are true freelance workers, and we heard from a number of them today, who currently have very few legal protections. And this measure before us would create minimum standards. The biggest problem facing freelance workers is the lack of timely payment. This measure would require a hiring party to pay its workers within 30 days after services are complete. And in the, in the, abs and in the absence of a written contract, that includes uh, different payment terms. So it has to be 30 days unless you have a written contract to say otherwise. It also um, would require freelance contracts over a threshold amount to be in writing. Uh, and it is hoped that this requirement will help avoid disputes and aid in resolving disputes when they arise. We've seen it happen in other states. We want it to happen here in Los Angeles. And I want to thank, uh, take a moment to thank several of the people in the groups who really helped uh, bring this issue forward. First, the Freelancers Union, including its executive director, Rafael Espinal, uh, for bringing this issue to my attention in the first place. And I think he called in earlier. We've had extensive conversations and meetings over, over time on this. 
uh, the local advocates, including Teamsters Local uh, 396 and Jim Smith, National Writers Union, others. I'm glad we had the support of Lane and we heard the Labor Fed called in. I was thrilled about that. Kim Fitzpatrick from the Office of Wage Standards uh, and, and Donya Minassian of the City Attorney's Office for preparing the report and creating a framework for this draft ordinance. We've all been working together on this for a long time. Uh, and I have a couple of amendments uh, that we're all working on, which I wanted to, to put forward as well. Mr. Uh, Lulico, do you, would it be appropriate, you think, before you get to your amendments uh, to hear the report from BCA and or the city attorney, or would you rather do that now? Uh, uh, actually, I'd rather just read the amendments that way. It's, it's telegraphed, and they may they okay. may reference them if that's okay. Go ahead. Part of what they're saying may may impact this. So, the amendments are five, fairly simple. Adopt the recommendations in the March fifteenth Bureau of Contract Administration report with the following amendments. One is to amend recommendation three to use a definition of hiring party similar to the definition of commercial hiring entity in Seattle's Independent Contracting Protections Ordinance. Two is to amend recommendations five and six to lower the annual threshold to six hundred dollars or more. It's currently at eight hundred, but six hundred is it will conform with the ten ninety nine requirements. Uh, and working with the, the city attorney others is about as low as we can we can reasonably get our departments to uh, to take on. But it's I wanted to lower it to make it to capture more. Three is to amend recommendation 14 to require the annual report to include data regarding the type of hiring party associated with complaints received. Four is to establish an effective date of July 1, 2023. And five is simply to uh, amend recommendation 15 to have BCA report back regarding the resources needed to implement the program. And uh, yeah, I didn't mean to steal all the thunder from our departments, but uh, I want to appreciate laying it out. and. Uh, and happy to have the uh, department's ad comment. Very good. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Blumenfield, for your uh, vision and leadership on this and for your thorough report. Uh, but in case there was <laughs> anything that BCA or the city attorney wanted to add, I'd, I'd like to give them the opportunity to do so at this point. Good afternoon. I'm Kimberly Fitzpatrick with the Office of Wage Standards and the Bureau of Contract Administration. Uh, thank you very much for that overview and introduction. Um, I think all of the uh, core tenets of the report really have been covered, so uh, you've made my job very easy. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions uh, that you may have. Um, thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much. Ms. Manassian, was there anything that you wanted to add or waiting uh, for questions? No, waiting for questions. Thank Very you, Councilmember. Okay. Um, Ms. Raman, any uh, questions or, or comments on this matter? Um, no, I'm very excited about uh, the work here. And thank you to all of you, Councilmember Blumenfield, um, uh, to Ms. Manassian, Ms. Fitzpatrick, and everyone who called in as well, clearly the there's been an incredible amount of work and thought that's already gotten into this process. I'm curious about um, just the um, process that was used to come up with these recommendations. Um, you know, what was the, was there outreach done to freelance workers to ask them um, kind of what, um, what they wanted to see or what best practices were. Just wanted to learn a little bit more about how the recommendations in this report uh, were arrived at. I'd be happy to speak on that a little bit. Um, when the uh, motion was passed back in January of 2021 and we began our research, New York City was really the, the key trailblazer at that point. Uh, so a lot of our work focused on New York City and see, and looking at what we could transfer there to here, because by all accounts, it has been a very successful law. Seattle has since passed a law, which will go into effect later this year, um, which offers a slightly different approach, which we also think is great. Um, 
but the recommendations in our report have largely been based on what has been implemented so far, which really left New York as, as sort of our um, prime example. We did speak with um, several representatives in the freelance industry. Um, the Freelancers Union has done a lot of research on the impact of the law and on the experience of freelancers. Uh, so that provided a lot of data that was available for us to look at, um, at the amount of underpayments and the struggle of people who do freelance work. Uh, so all of that was taken into account and um, we worked with, uh, with uh, our partners in the council offices and in the city attorney's office um, to take a look at what we thought would work best given our enforcement experience with minimum wage and with the unique legal landscape in California. Um, great. And I just had one question also about the commercial hiring uh, entity uh, addition, Councilman Bloomfield, that you just offered. Right. Um, I'm, I'm just curious about, so this doesn't, so basically, can you tell me a little bit more about... Um, the, the, the concern was not to pick up the, you know, the, the homeowner who's hiring uh, a gardener or something like that or if you're you're you know, I can I can let our city attorney talk about it a little bit more but but the idea was that it was under the definition that we had it was so broad people were worried that we were we were scooping up God. more than was appropriate or that we could chew and the commercial hiring kind of put the put the bullseye where it needed to be it, and and Ms. Benassi if you want to add to that there's nothing really to add. Um, that's exactly it. It was to prevent the capture of the individual homeowners who are just hiring someone to do a, a small job. Right. But then we put the burden on companies that were hiring freelance workers. Got it. So, and I noticed you mentioned the kind of gig, gig working apps um, as being exempted from this. And I imagine that was for Lyft and Uber kind of services. Is that right? Well, generally they're covered under Prop 22, which passed, and we're, we as a city are prevented from um, legislating around that. But just as a clarifying point, uh, most of those apps already provide written contracts for their workers. And, and the reason why I made a point of that at the beginning is because at first when people heard about this, some folks understandably got concerned that, wait a second, are we somehow allowing an avenue for folks to get around AB5, and that's absolutely right. not the case. Right. Um, you know, just the opposite. But we're not trying to bring anyone into this freelancer category that's not there, unlike the the, the, the efforts by some of those unscrupulous uh, app-based companies that were trying to get around paying their employees. So that was to just kind of make that really clear. We put lots of belts and suspenders on to make sure that Nobody could even dream of thinking that this is an end run around that. This is this is really targeted toward true freelance workers, not not companies trying to disguise their employees as freelance workers. Yeah, I just out of curiosity, how you know, I know that there's like graphic design gig plat gig platforms that I know small businesses use to deliver some of those services. How would it impact? that relationship if you're if you're a small business that's relying on a on an online platform for not necessarily you know taxi services but for other kinds of um, services like graphic design services which are pretty routinely I think contracted out on those platforms how would how would this um, affect that relationship so this is Daniel Minasian speaking on behalf of the city attorney's office. Um, the small graphic design employer, whoever wants to be the hiring entity, would have to comply with this law. And even if they're hiring off of a platform, maybe it's just a referral service, we'd have to evaluate it on a case-by-case -case basis. But Potentially, the, the platform has a written contract or it's just a referral service, but it would be incumbent on the hiring entity to prepare a written contract and have the terms in the written contract and pay either based on what's in the contract or within 30 days. Got it. Okay. Thank you. just had um, a couple of questions. Uh, because we're 
doing this on a city basis, we're building in some limitations based on the amount of work that's done within the city. Uh, but if I if I heard correctly, one of the callers mentioned um, a different approach, which, uh, or, or maybe not a different, but an additional approach, which might capture the hiring entities that are located within the city of Los Angeles and imposing requirements on them, regardless of the location of uh, of the um, of the contractor. So. Um, I can see pluses and minuses to both approaches, um, and maybe it's possible to do both in order to have the broadest uh, degree of, of uh, coverage. But um, can can either Mr. Bloomingfield or BCA maybe talk about the thought process that would go into that, and then Ms. Manassian, if there's any legal impediment under the Commerce Clause or otherwise for doing that, um, if you could speak to that as well. I, I, I'll be happy to speak first because there are some legal concerns, um, a number of them which I will be happy to speak to you offline about, but there are limitations on where we can legislate and where we can um, impose these types of um, labor-related minimum standards, um, and generally they're tied to where the work is performed, but ultimately if a, if a freelance worker who was hired, you know, to do work outside of the city of LA boundaries, they still have the rights to go to court and ask for their payments. It's just that the jurisdictional uh, issues would be for the city of LA where work is being performed within the city of LA. I see. Okay. Um, okay. And, and then, um, and, and just to add, Mr. Corey, yeah. I, I approached this, I wanted it to be as broad as possible and cover everyone as possible. Uh, but working with the city attorney, this was, this was uh, as broad as we could legally make it. Makes sense. Um, I, and then I was also thinking the remedies uh, part of this. Uh, if you have a hiring entity that's a you know repeat offender, let's say, and, and this seems to be a, a pattern in practice, part of their business plan. Um, and, and I suppose this question would equally apply to our wage theft uh, enforcement. Uh, process. Is, is there any way that we can um, debar such a company from future procurement, say, with the city of Los Angeles, or factor that into RFPs that the city releases when we get, uh, uh, when we submit uh, RFPs to the marketplace so that we're not giving procurement opportunities to the very companies that are screwing over their workers uh, and or their uh, their contractors? I'm Yuminasi, city attorney. Um, I'm happy to talk with potential option, options offline about that, but that really kind of gets into some of our proprietary contracting um, uh, competitive bidding process. Yeah. And um, I think we we can maybe think of ways to do that. We just probably need to talk about that offline through a different process. Yeah, and, and I, I, I don't, I certainly don't want you to, you know, give off the top of your head legal advice to us in, in the middle of a meeting, but I just, if there's some way that we can explore as, as we're pursuing the ordinance itself to think about, um, maybe that's a separate motion, I don't know, maybe it's included in this or not, but it just would seem incongruous for us to do business with the very companies that we're trying to punish because they're, you know, acting irresponsibly towards the people who are doing work for them. So, uh, I, I, I think, something to look at. yeah, I think we can look at that separately. It would likely be a separate motion because it would need to go through procurement and maybe something that we put into the request for bids or RFPs. Yeah. Um, but it would be a different avenue. This is going to be regulating businesses, but we can work on something separately. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, thank you everybody who's, uh, you know, taking up the laboring oar and, and getting this done. And thank you again, Mr. Blumenfield. This is uh, this is really an important step forward. And I think, you know, 
maybe we're not the first because we have a, a few um, we have our counterparts in New York and Seattle who've staked out some ground on this but I think certainly this will be a big step forward nationally uh, in in providing some relief to the people who are doing this kind of work so uh, thank you very much any other questions or comments on this matter all right um, seeing none let's go ahead and Call the roll on uh, item number two on the BCA report recommendations as amended, uh, as stated by Mr. Blumenfield. Very good. Councilmember Krikorian? Aye. Councilmember Blumenfield? Blumenfield, aye. And Councilmember Raman? Yes. Okay, that measure carries. Um, and uh, we'll go ahead next to item number three. Item three, CO and Joint Workforce Development Board and Economic and Workforce Development Department reports relative to the year 23 program year 2022-23 Workforce Development Board annual plan. Thank you, and, and who will be presenting on this matter? Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Susie rios Bonat with the Office of the City Administrative Officer, and I also have my EWDD colleagues available as well. Very good. Good afternoon. afternoon. Before you is the CAO report relative to the Workforce Development Board and Economic and Workforce Development Department's Year 23 Annual Plan and Related Actions. I will provide a brief summary of our report before turning it over to EWDD. Uh, prior to that, I do want to mention we have a minor technical amendment to the original report adding specific language relative to contract duration in recommendation 3A, and I'll read that into the record. Um, so recommendation 3A, negotiate and execute agreements and amendments to agreements with public, private, nonprofit, and or governmental entities with funds awarded as described in the annual plan, subject to the Workforce Development Board Local Elected Officials Agreement, Council File 16-0475, and here's the amendment, for a term effective June 30th, 2022 through June 30th, 2023. The remainder of the recommendation and other recommendations in the report remain unchanged. The annual plan provides the details on revenues and expenditures for the city's workforce development system, or WDS, including funding and approvals to implement service strategies and activities that enhance the Workforce Development Board, or WDB's, efforts to provide employment development services to vulnerable populations and businesses. The annual plan also includes various employment, contracting, and procurement authorities in support of the WDS. The recommendations in our office's report also include adoption of the annual plan and its supporting budget, as well as approval of an extension to the Workforce Development Board Local Elected Officials Agreement. The year 23 annual plan is comprised of approximately $139.7 million to fund the EWDD's workforce development strategies and activities in the 22-23 program year. A summary table of funding sources is included on page 10 of our report and includes the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, or WIOA, Formula and Discretionary Grants, Los Angeles County Grants, City General Fund Dollars, and carryover funds from prior years, among others. New this year is, most notably, the Californians for All Youth Workforce Development Program Grant, which consists of $53 million for youth workforce programs. The WDB has approved the annual plan following the required 30-day public comment period. At the time the WDB approved the annual plan, the State Employment Development Department had not yet announced its funding allocations for the WIOA formula grants. As such, the allocations provided in the annual plan and in our report are preliminary estimates based on prior year allocations. The final allocation of $40.9 million, or approximately $5 million over these EWDD, EWDD estimates, was announced by the state on May 25th of this year. The EWDD will submit a revised budget to the WDB, the City Council, and the Mayor in August to allocate these additional WIOA formula funds. 
The CAO recommendations also include an instruction to EWDD to report back to the Workforce Development Board, Council, and Mayor by November 30th, 2022, with its annual carry-in report, identifying any changes to the annual plan, including revisions to grant amounts and additional grants that will be received. This concludes the summary of our report, and I'd like to turn it over to my colleagues at EWDD for additional highlights of the year 23 annual plan. Good thank afternoon, you. good afternoon, council members, and thank you, Susie. Um, I'm uh, Gerardo Rubalcaba. I'm the assistant general manager for workforce development. I did want to just kind of highlight a couple of areas uh, within the annual plan. Um, so, as Susie mentioned, um, you know, we we are projecting 140 million dollars in new funding. Um, that does that include the you know the 6.2 million in new WIOA dollars, which um, were announced after the the annual plan was released. Um, it does include a couple of new funding streams that um, have been committed to the region, but you know we are required to submit a, a formal application to the state, and so it should be coming forth uh, within the next few months. Um, and that includes a prison to employment uh, funding to support our reentry initiatives in the amount we're projecting of three million dollars. Um, it also includes a new grant in, uh, for that the state is calling the Regional Equity Recovery Grant. Um, and this is to support and to strengthen partnerships between the public workforce system and community colleges. Um, so as you see in our report, uh, you know, we've included the funding, but there's no allocations attached. Any recommendations will be uh, to be determined. Um, so at the time that the funds are realized, we will come back to city council with uh, additional recommendations. Um, and, and as the CEO mentioned, we are also planning to come back to the support uh, committee in August with recommendations for the additional real dollars that were uh, um, made public after the, the, the first draft was released. Um, within our recommendations, there's also a number of, of new initiatives that, that we're excited about. Um, you know, we are, you know, because of the additional funding, able to pilot new programs around apprenticeships. Um, so you will see increased funding for apprenticeship programs. Um, and, and as well as different um, uh, priority populations, such as domestic violence survivors, as um, and um, and uh, um, people with disability. Uh, we've also allocated two hundred thousand dollars to support the transition or the relocation of our WorkSource Center in Canoga Park. Um, they are in the process of. Um, uh, identifying a new facility and do require additional support uh, you know, to, uh, with, with that relocation. And lastly, I do want to just highlight that, um, you know, we are also recommending to downsize our workforce system. So our WorkSource centers will decrease uh, from 16 current WorkSource center operators to 15 in the new program year. Um, and that is really the result of one of our WorkSource centers that has declined funding for um, the new program year. Um, that is our WorkSource Center in the West Valley, currently operated by uh, Build Industries. Um, and in the new year, there's also a number of, of re-procurements that we do plan to um, undertake, and I did want to highlight a couple of those. So we will begin uh, working on re-procuring our WorkSource Center system. We do expect to release an RFP um, you know, within the next six months. Um, we're also re-procuring our, our higher LA system. So this is our, uh, our network of uh, community-based organizations that augment our youth search centers and providing summer youth employment to participants. Um, so with that, I will stop there and, and can answer any questions regarding uh, the annual plan and our recommendations. Right, Mr. Blumenfield. Uh, this is the first I'm hearing that you're planning on getting rid of the West Valley Work Source Center. Is that what I heard correctly? And 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 how is that going to work when you have such a substantial part of the population living in the West Valley and there's no Work Source Center? You know, there's only one other one in the in the valley, and crossing the 405 is like uh, you know crossing the Great Divide. I, I don't. Uh, how is that happening? How many are going to be left in the valley, and, and how? What is the per capita uh, use of those? It just sounds, that sounds insane to me. Yeah, as, as I, I mentioned it um, earlier, it, it was not our recommendation. This was actually, um, you know, the WorkSource Center that declined funding for the new program year. 
Um, we are in the process of re-procuring the our work source center system so we do plan to through that procurement identify a, a, an additional um uh, work source center in the, the valley uh, so currently in the new program year we will go from four work source centers in the valley to three however we do through our procurement intend to correct that and, and identify a new provider um you know the the current uh, west valley work source center is located about 15 minutes away from um, the Canoga Park Works Our Center. So we have been in communication with Councilman Lee's office. You know, we did share our plan and how we will continue to serve their constituents. Um, you know, again, that with our Canoga Park Works Our Center, it is, you know, a, a comprehensive Works Our Center where we have a full-blown kind of partnership there with not only our own work source, but, you know, we have um, the State Employment Development Department. We have a number of uh, strategic partners that are co-located in, in that center. Um, so we do think are you, that... Are you getting rid of the Canoga Park Work Source Center? I'm, I'm no, no, they, they lost their lease and are in the process of relocating. So the Canoga, we do intend to continue services in Canoga Park. Um, we will... If they just again are going to identify a new site, uh, and they have already identified a new site within COVID Nogo Park that they're finalizing their lease negotiations. So we do not expect that um, you know to move services out of the Nogo Park area. Okay, I misheard because I, I yeah. heard you say you're going to go from 16 to 15, and you're going to get rid of the Nogo Park site. Yeah, and I'm you're sorry, you're not getting rid of the Nogo Park site. No, no, no. We I, and my apologies if I misspoke. Uh, we're the the sign. I, 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 I readily admit that. I just obviously okay. my ears perked up because that's you know forty percent of the city is in the valley. We only have four out of all of them, and the web that that one I work very closely with, and they serve a, a very a population that needs it, and they do a good job of it. So um, they, they do a great I'm, job. It's one of our very yeah. clear with me how what's what's happening. I maybe I'm, I'm just not getting it. So yeah. It is the, uh, the site that's currently uh, located in a chat sport that's operated by Build Rehab. Um, it is one of our smaller work source centers uh, located in Councilman Lee's office. That agency has declined funding for the new program year. Um, so we are, you know, working to transition and ensure that our Canoga Park work source center is able to pick up the slack and serve that part of the, of the, of the valley. Um, again, we're the Canoga Park. They, they're not. Uh, they are. They did lose their lease um, and have to relocate. So we are working with them to identify a new site uh, that will remain within the Canoga Park area. Um, so that process is already underway. We we do expect that by October one, a new site will be operational. Got so to 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 rephrase it, just so I'm clear. The Kenoga site, which is the main site, and then you had that satellite site up in Chatsworth. That's the satellite correct. site is going to disappear, but the, the Kenoga site is going to take that on, and that's closer to where the greater need is. Uh, even though they're losing their lease, you're going to find another location within Kenoga Park so that there's no disruption of services for, for folks in that area. That is correct. Okay. I feel much better about what I did. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, Ms. Rahman, any questions on this? Okay. Right. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you very much for that comprehensive report and for putting those of us, uh, all three of us who represent the Valley, putting our minds better at ease. Um, so with that, we can go ahead and call the roll on approving the CAO report as amended. Very good. Councilmember Krikorian? Aye. Councilmember Blumenfield? Aye. And Councilmember Robin? Yes. Very good. Um, the other thing I meant to, to mention is I would like to also request that EWDD present the draft work for Worksource Center RFP to the committee uh, prior to its being released. Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Lynn, is there anything else before the committee? Uh, that clears the desk. Very good. Uh, there being no other business before us, uh, the committee is adjourned. Thanks very much, everyone.